Hello and welcome. Today I'll be providing commentary over one of my on-stream builds from earlier this week. I decided to make this build after reading comments that I've received on my previous videos where people would say something along the lines of, my castle is just a square, or I always seem to create a square castle. Well, I'm here to demonstrate how that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's a lot you can do, even if your castle is just a square. For this build, I decided to make a hair and nail salon. At first, I was just going to make a barbershop, but as I got further into the building, I felt a little more inspired to go further. I was fairly certain early on what kind of mirror I wanted to use on the wall to emulate kind of the salon mirrors that you would normally see. I decided to go with the biggest mirror possible for the wall and it seemed to work out nicely for this build. I wasn't too sure about the tables up front though. The wooden tables didn't quite fit what I had in mind. At first it looked like a good idea, but as time went on, I kind of changed my mind. I had a lot of theory crafting going on in my mind as far as how to implement some of these designs as part of this build. I ultimately decided to go with wooden pillars to contrast against the white background of the wallpaper. I felt it was important to have pillars that contrasted really well against the background of the building or the wallpaper, I mean, behind the mirrors. The wallpaper process can be really tedious when you're doing every pillar individually, but for the most part, I really like this process. Next was the floor. I knew for sure I wanted to use the lightest color library flooring I could. I wanted that shiny, glossy wooden look to the ground. And I knew that having a shiny, glossy floor against a dark contrasting column would look really nice in the end. So I decided to go with that. I decided to go with white lighting in the interior of the building just because I wanted to make sure that the color or the light source did not distort what was made visible. So if you were in a hair salon, wouldn't you want your hairstylist to be using a bright, well-lit uh, light to make sure that your colors are correct or that you know, maybe they're not messing up somewhere. Yeah, I would hope so. Uh, good visibility without it being overwhelming was kind of a hard challenge to kind of balance in this castle because it's so small. Um, this is only a one floor build and I wanted to also use like a checkered uh, flooring, mostly because I tend to see that a lot in a lot of hair salons and barber shops and things like that. I never understood why that was the case, but it does seem to fit well here for whatever reason, so I decided to go with it. At this point in the build, I started thinking about the privacy screens. So when I used the privacy screens, I was trying to figure out how much of the space I wanted to control, how much of the space I wanted to make visible or invisible. And I think the manipulation of space in this particular build was crucial to the final uh, result. We don't really have chairs in game that fit well with this idea, mostly because every chair has a very high or very tall backing to it. So I had to make do with what we had. I hope it still kind of fits the concept, even if it's not perfect. I decided to go with gold accents because I wanted to give the air of prestige. 
in this particular salon. I wanted it to look expensive. I wanted it to look like a high class salon where all the greatest and best vampires of all of Vardorn go to get their hair done and their nails and all that good stuff. I decided to go with the alchemy flooring for, instead of the dark tiles as a substitute because I just thought it was more visually interesting. These particular squares of alchemy flooring tend to do really well standing alone as standalone squares in general, I guess you could say. Whereas the other one I used earlier looked like it was a continuation of something that was missing. So I ended up swapping out the um, alchemy flooring. When I added the sofas, I decided to use pretty much what I would normally see in a salon myself, where you would have some magazines, a coffee table, a waiting sitting area. Usually the sitting area was rather comfortable, usually, um, at least in the salons I went to. And part of the reason for that is that you might spend your whole day at the salon. I mean, I've had times where I was sitting in that chair for like four hours, five hours, depending on what I was getting done. Uh, and if it was something where maybe instead of getting my hair done in a salon, I was getting it braided somewhere, um, my hair would take maybe six hours to complete, depending on what they were doing and how many people were working on my hair at the same time. So, I mean, even just sitting here in the chair, I wanted it to look comfy. I wanted it to look inviting because I know what it's like to sit in a chair for like that for several hours. It has to be comfortable. I really wish we had some kind of lamp in the game that would have maybe like a curvature or like a bell top that leans over. Um, originally I was thinking that it'd be really cool if we had that just because I could use it to kind of look like a hair dryer, um, like a hair drying station. But unfortunately we don't really have that in game yet and I'm kind of hoping one day we do, but uh, I guess we'll have to see. At this point, Blood Moon started rolling around and I knew I was deep into the build at this point. I kept messing around with not so much color stuff, but item placement stuff. Whenever Blood Moon happens, I tend to avoid messing around with the colors as much. Mostly because I don't necessarily like the distortion of color. And I wasn't too worried about it. So it kind of reminds me to work more on the placement of items. So that's why I just kind of keep it going. At this point, I started having trouble figuring out where to put these shelves. I knew I wanted the potion racks up to kind of look like places where you would stick nail polish in or other various chemicals like hair dye and things like that. At this point, I was trying to figure out where to put or what kind of tables to put here, but I ultimately decided to go with the garden furniture because it sat perfectly in the center of the squares, whereas the other ones didn't. At this point, I was kind of fighting with myself, trying to decide how many of those tables I wanted to have in that room. But I also didn't want to block off any entryways, so I ended up settling on just two tables. I decided to add some lamps to kind of emulate the lights that you would see in a nail salon where... where the nail tech could just have really good views of your nails and have a really good view of what they're doing. You need proper lighting for that, so I decided to go with these uh, curved light posts. I really wish we had a bigger version of this, but kind of like a bell shape at the top. Um, but yeah, we don't really have that in the game. It's probably a stylistic choice, um, but I would like to see something like that for furniture in the future. 
At this point, I started adding some paintings and at first I was going to put random paintings up, but then an idea occurred to me to actually add portraits instead. A lot of times when you enter these hair salons, they'll have portraits of random people on the walls with some of times really ridiculous hairstyles. Uh, and other times just relatable ones or ordinary ones, usually modeled by someone and uh, probably out of some kind of catalog. Usually these posters came from manufacturers of products that the salon might sell separately or that the salon might use. It wasn't always the case, but I always thought that was something interesting. I also decided to add some shrubbery to this build. I love adding plants and stuff to all of my builds if I can, so I couldn't waste the opportunity to do that. It was really important to me that I had all of the frames matching no matter what the object was on the wall. So I decided to go with the gold trim for everything. I'm really happy with how it turned out actually. And once I put down the new chairs, it just looked really, really good. I decided to put some book racks, circular book racks that is, in different places because I wanted to kind of emulate the idea of like a magazine rack because a lot of times when you're sitting in the chair, there's nothing to do. So a lot of times these salons and stuff will have um, magazines for customers to look through as they're waiting patiently. I put a couple of clocks in this build as well because it's really easy to lose time when you're in the salon. Like I never go to a salon if I have somewhere to go or somewhere to be within a really short period of time because you never know how long it's going to take you in there. Watching myself walk through the nail area of the salon several times, I can't help but think of the nauseating scent that would come from all of the chemicals in those rooms. I was having a little bit of trouble with the carpets here, trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to lay out the rugs. But when I eventually decided to go with the gold trim rug, I was pretty happy with it. I decided to dye them red to kind of match the alchemy flooring squares a little bit because I felt like I didn't have enough of the color red in the design yet. And I just wanted it to look nice. In the end, I decided to turn all the chairs red, except for the chairs in the back. I sat in some of these chairs a couple of times just to kind of see if it gave me the vibe I was looking for. At this point, I knew I wanted to add way more privacy screens to this build. I liked the idea of adding privacy to pretty much every station here in the build, mostly because I really value that myself. I mean, nothing is worse than when you go somewhere and 
you're having something, you know, done to you, your physical body, and everyone's just staring at you, and you're not sure if they're looking at you, or they're looking at your hair, or what they're looking at, but it's just a really uncomfortable feeling sometimes. I kept the gold trim all throughout the entire build. It adds a little bit of class and luxury without going overboard, I think. And eventually I ended up changing out the tables for the secretaries. It kind of created a look that kind of emulated some of the containers or storage boxes I've seen in certain salons. Sometimes instead of a table, they'll just have a drawer or something. In the front, I've also put some jewelry because it wasn't uncommon for places like this to sell jewelry as well. At this point of the build, I knew this was going to be difficult because I didn't know what kind of chandelier I wanted to use. So once I figured out the chandelier in the front, I started experimenting with chandeliers throughout the rest of the building. And at one point, I ended up adding some lighting above the individual chairs, but I ended up scrapping that idea in favor of something a little bit less bright and a little bit less bright. I started messing around with the circular rugs and honestly, I kind of wish that the bigger rugs had a small version that were about the size as these, because I probably would have used them instead. I was debating whether or not to add a chandelier to this back room, but I ultimately scrapped it and decided to just leave it alone. At this point, you can see me adding the lights above the chairs, and I was really quick to change that. Once I saw the entire room, how bright it was, I was like, wow, the whole vibe is off. So I decided to leave it alone. I wanted a classy feel, but it didn't have to be super bright in there. I started turning the carpet sideways just to kind of create a little bit of a visual difference between the front and back end of the salon. And I also continued adding more of the lights throughout the entire build. At this point, I started adding the finishing touches of the build, and I decided to go with a really fancy carpet, as you guys can see. I believe this carpet is part of the Castlevania DLC pack, so if you have that, you should have that carpet. I was fighting with the vases here, trying to decide whether I wanted to have a red vase or a white vase. I think at one point I even thought about making them black, but I ended up settling with red instead. I also planted some blood rose seeds at the bottom of the different uh, shrubbery areas. And in the vases, I decided to use a plant that kind of went from green to red. What do you guys think of this build? I think it came out alright. I'm not sure if I would change anything though. I think that it actually ended up being pretty much all I wanted it to be. I challenge you guys out there. What can you do with a square castle? By the way, this castle was made in Silverlight in the bottom left-hand side of Silverlight. I'd say Southwest Silverlight. 
in that corner. And it's also a 7x7 seven seven castle. For those of you who don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I am a Shiloh Eats Quaintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. And you can catch me playing P Rising usually on Thursdays, but I do stream it more often from time to time. If you like this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Shiloh out.